Okay, so we're going to take a look at the 2020 question 8, part A, and there's also part B. And the part A starts with Wheel Limited, who produces a single product, the company's profit and loss account for the year ended 2019, is provided during which 26,000 units were produced and sold. And you're given the sales, materials, direct labour, factory overheads, administrative expenses, selling expenses, and then your overall net profit from that. And the materials and direct labour are variable costs. So that's important, these two are variable costs. Apart from a sales commission of 6%, selling and administration are fixed. So this one has to be broken down. There's this a fixed and a variable element to that. And the uh, factory overheads, of course, are a one that we have to divide as well into fixed costs and variable costs. So we have workings on those and the administrative expenses are a fixed cost. So factory overheads are a mixed cost and have behaved in the past as follows. So you're given 2018, 17 and 16 units and overheads um, in order to identify the variable cost elements of factory overheads. So the question then, part A, one is asking us to calculate the variable and fixed elements of factory overheads using the high-low method. So we have two elements to factory overheads, which we saw there was 166,000. And we have to use the high-low method to calculate. So the high-low method is a method of calculating the variable cost element of factory overheads and that allows us then to calculate the fixed element and we use the historical data to do that. So just to start my question so my factory overheads As we see there, are 166,000. And I have to figure out how much is fixed cost and how much is variable cost. So if I take the high-low method, and you won't need to write all this out, this is just for learning purposes. The high-low method uses the historical data from that grid there to allow us to calculate the variable cost element. So if I take the, the high and the low of both the units, and the overhead, that year then I'll be able to get the difference okay, so in units the highest was 21 and the lowest was 13.8 so I have 21,000 there minus the 13.8 13,800 and that gives me back 7,200 in the difference and if I do the same with the overheads, the highest there is 148,500, I should say, and the lowest is 123,300. And 123,300. So the difference there is 252. And the formula then for the variable cost of the factory overheads is the overhead itself, the difference in the overhead is 25 divided by the units in difference, 7,200. So that gives me a variable cost of 350 per unit. So 350 per unit 
um, allows me then to calculate for this year. So for 2019, the question told me that I produced and sold 26,000 units. So if I multiply that by the 350, that gives me the variable cost element of my factory overheads of, and again, just run it in your calculator and you should get 91,000. So So if factory overheads are 166,000 and I know that the variable cost element is 91,000, it means that the fixed cost element of that is the difference between the two and that's 75,000. So I have now calculated the variable cost element of my factory overheads and the fixed cost element of my factory overheads addressing the first question. Okay, so for the next part of our question, we need to calculate the break-even point and margin of safety for Wheel and Limited. So the break-even point is the fixed cost divided by the contribution per unit. So really in order to do this part, we have to do a marginal costing statement first of all so I'm just going to write that up so you're taking the figures here from the 2019 um, profit and loss account for year ended and use that as your base or your starting point so if we take the sales figures Sales were one million and forty thousand, and for the marginal costing, we next looked at the variable costs. So, for the variable costs, we were told that materials at two hundred and twenty-one thousand. Our variable cost and direct labor is also a variable cost. Then factory overheads. We have just calculated the variable cost element of the factory overhead. And we had that up there at 91,000. The administration expenses a fixed cost, which we'll deal with in a moment. And selling expenses is the next one. And that's really the commission. So the commission piece has to be calculated. So we were told that commission is 6% of sales. So again, just run that on your calculator. And that is 6% of 1,040,000. I'll just write it in there. And that will give you 62,400. And that then is your variable cost piece. So if you total that, you'll get 738,400. And your sales minus your variable costs will give you the contribution. So the contribution here works out at 301,600. Now I'm leaving some space here to the right hand side because I'm going to get per unit uh, prices there as well. So this is contribution. So it looks and feels like a little trading piece where you have your sales minus your cost of sales to give you gross profit. But here it is sales less the variable costs to give you contribution. And then you just go to the fixed costs. So 
So again, just to come back to our list here, we have the factory overheads, the fixed cost element of the factory overheads. And we had that earlier there at 75. So I'm just going to uh, subtotal those first of all. We have the admin expenses. And that was 115,500. And the remainder of the selling expenses are fixed. So we have selling expenses, which is 87,900. And we're minusing the commission there that we had earlier of 62,400. So the remaining fixed cost piece then on that is 25,500. So my fixed costs then are totaling at 216,000. So that's a figure that we'll need in a moment to do our break even when we put it over our contribution. But in the meantime, I can just uh, subtract that and it will give me my net profit and that works out at 85,600 and just double check that should match what's in your question that you were given so net profit was 85,600 and here it is here as well so it's just a margin costing statement with the variable costs separated out from the fixed costs so we get our contribution first of all, then subtract the fixed costs and the net profit will match back so that you know you have it done correctly. So once you have done your margin costing statement, then you need to get the per unit costs. So you're simply dividing um, all of these by the number of units produced. Um, so again, just run your calculator through. So 1,040,000 divided by the 26,000 units produced works out at 40. So. The materials variable cost per unit is 221,000 divided by the 26,000. So again, that works out at 850. The labor divided by the 26,000 works out at 14. The variable cost for factory overheads, 91,000 divided by 26,000. We should get 350 there because we had that there already. The selling commission, the 62,400 works out at 240. And the contribution per unit produced, so dividing the 301, 600 by the 26,000 works out at 11, 1160, I should say. And those rates we will need in a moment to do further calculations. So the next piece then is to do our break even and our margin of safety. So just gonna start a new page for that. So if we take our break even, so break even is even to fixed costs divided by the contribution per unit. So if I take my total fixed costs from that statement there, Let's see, just 
put back to show you. So my total fixed cost is the 216,000. So 216,000. And we're dividing that by the contribution per unit that we just calculated there. It was the 301,600 divided by the 26 and that worked out at 1160. So if we run that on the calculator then we will see that the number of units that we need to produce to break even is 18,621. So you can round it up to the nearest unit. So each unit is contributing 1160 towards in contribution towards um, covering our costs and if we divide that into our fixed costs we get the number of units that we need to cover the costs. So that will give us our break even point and the margin of safety then. The margin of safety is our sales minus the break even. And again, we're looking for units here. So the units, we said we're going to sell 26,000 units. So again, it happens to be the same figure as the produced. So just to watch that, it could be different. But um, here it's the same number of units sold, 26,000 and minus the break even of 18,621. So that will give us back 7,379 units. So if we make that sales target and we cover our break even, we'll have a margin of safety with 7,379 units extra. Now for part three, we're asked to calculate the number of units that must be sold at 45 euros per unit to provide a profit of 15% of the sales revenue earned from these same units. So you can do this a couple of ways. Um, you can hold the margin costing statement and just do it per, per unit. Okay, based on the new figures, so the sales will be 45 euros per unit. The variable costs will equal your materials, first of all. And we had these earlier when we were doing our margin costing statement. The materials at cost were 850 per unit. The labour is another one that we need and that's 14 per unit. And the variable factory overheads per unit were 350. And the only one that will change then will be the selling commission because our sales will change. So the rate is still the same, um, 6%. So it'll be 6% of the 45 that we're going to make on each unit. So that will work out then at 270. So again, just run that on your calculator. So that gives us the total variable cost then, which will work out at 28.70 per unit. So subtracting that gives me a contribution of 16.30 per unit. And then the fixed costs won't change 
they're fixed irrespective of the number of units so that's 216,000 so we know that subtracting that then will give us net profit and we're told that the new profit figure is at 15% of sales so 15% of the 45 that we're going to make on the sale per unit will work out at 675 that's per unit okay so filling in what you know then gives us this little piece at the end which says that 1630 per unit minus 216,000 equals 675 per unit so again if we put all the units on one side and the the 216,000 on the other for the fixed cost it'll allow me to calculate the units so 1630 units minus 675 units so bring it across becomes a minus and that's equal to and this comes across and becomes a plus and that will leave us with 955 units equals 216 so again at that stage you don't need to write all that up you just run it in your calculator and the units will equal 216,000 divided by 955 will work out at 22617.80 and you can because it's units then you can just round it up 618 units so that's the number of units needed to be sold to provide a profit of 15%. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. That's just using uh, what you know back into a cost margin costing statement or the same thing really, but just in a formula style is the sales minus the variable cost minus the fixed cost equals the net profit. And you fill in what you know. So the sales is going to be 45 euros per unit minus the variable costs which you're going to have to calculate anyway through this section so the variable costs here working out at 28.70 per unit minus the fixed costs of 216,000 is equal to the net profit and again you have to calculate that at 15 percent of 45 is 6.75 per unit so again putting all the units on one side um, you will end up with essentially the same thing. So you will have U equal to 22618. Okay, so it will work out the same um, depending then on which way you understand it or want to present it. So this is certainly looks quicker and is quicker if you can remember it. But it's based on this, your sales minus your variable costs minus your fixed costs equals your profit. Okay. Okay, so now we're on to part four. We want to calculate the profit for Wheel and Limited um, that they would make if it reduced its selling price by 5% increase its fixed cost by 4% and increase the sales commission percentage to 7% and thereby increase the number of units sold by 20% with all other cost levels and percentages remaining unchanged. Now this is unchanged from the 2019 figures so um, you know base it on what you have in the question there on part A. So we have to calculate the profit so we can do that again through the marginal costing statement so this is just restated with the new values so again just to label that part a part four and we'll start with the sales and the sales this time is going to increase 
So increase the number of units sold by 20%. So the units sold originally were 26,000. So we're increasing that by another, we're adding on another 4% there. Or sorry, 20%, I should say. So uh, just run that on your calculator and you get a number of units equals 31,200. And the price the sale price was originally 40 and we know that because the, the sale was sales were 1 million and 40,000 dividing that by the 26,000 that was originally 40 euros per unit of sale and if we are uh, changing that then so we're reducing the selling price by five percent so 40 minus five percent will work out and again just run it on your calculators there and you'll get 38 euros so the quantity that we're, we're going to sell is 31,200 at 38 euros per unit if we multiply those up, we we'll get sales of 1,185,600. Okay, so a little bit of working is there on the sales because there are two variables changing. The number of units sold is increasing and the selling price is reducing. So that's our sales figure and then the same as before you subtract your variable costs and our variable costs many of these aren't changing so materials uh, is the same again there's no change so 221,000 the direct labor hasn't changed 364,000 the factory overheads that we calculated earlier at 91,000 won't change. And what is changing is the commission. And we're told that the commission is going to increase to 7%. So that 7% of the sales, which we now know is 1,185,600. So again, run that on your calculator and you will get 82,992. So those are our variable costs. So that comes back to 676,000. So sales minus the variable costs then will give us our contribution. So I'm just labeling these, but you won't have to in your working 519 600 there and then minus your fixed costs and the fixed costs we're told that the fixed costs are going to increase by four percent so we had 216,000 earlier in our fixed costs so we have to increase that by 4%. So add on 4% to that. And again, just run that on your calculators and you'll get 224,640. So our contribution minus our fixed costs then will give us back our net profit, which is what we were asked for. 66,768. So part five of this question asks us to explain what is meant by stepped fixed costs and give an example. So step fixed costs are costs that are fixed within a certain level of production. And if we were to give an example, we could take the likes of rent. And if we had production, at different levels, we'll say not to 100,000 units, and then 100,000 units to 200,000 units, I should say, 
and so on, 200,000 to 300,000 and so on. And the rent then increases gradually as the number of units produced increases. So if rent was 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, etc. So a simple example will suffice and just draw a very quick chart. So the rent levels um, at 10. Just space it out a little bit. And again, you can get your ruler and just mark out units. So not to 100, 200, 300, 400, 400. So as production increases, our rent increases, so the not to 100,000, the rent is fixed at 10K. And once it goes over 100,000 units of production, it goes up to 20,000 and stays there until we reach the next production level and so on. So you just map it out and join the dots really and so on. So that is a step fixed cost graph and example. Okay, so part B of our question, Aldridge Limited produces 15,000 units of product A during the year ending 2019. 12,000 of these units were sold at 420 per unit and the production costs were as follows. So you have materials, labour, variable overheads, fixed overheads, and you're required to prepare profit and loss statements under marginal costing and absorption costing principles. And part two then is outline the differences between the different costing methods and indicate which one should be used for financial accounting purposes. So if we take the marginal costing um, profit and loss, first of all, it's quite straightforward. It's really what we've been doing up to now. So put in your heading and you'll start off then with your sales. So sales is your number of units sold, which is 12,000, and it's multiplied by the price that we're sold at for 20 per unit. So we have to calculate that and just run it on your calculators there and you'd get 50,400. Then we want the production costs. And the production costs are in the marginal costing are made up of your variable costs. Just like we had before. So we have materials. So materials are at 70, sorry, at 70 cent per unit and the quantities, and so for this we use the, what's produced, it's its production cost section, so it's 15,000 this time by the 70 cent. So that works out then at 10,500. The labor the labor is at 60 cents so again it's 15,000 by the 60 cent and that again will run on your calculators at 9,000 the variable overheads are at 55 cents so again 15,000 at 
55 cent. We'll come to 8,250. And that's the variable part of the costs. So we add those together and we should get 27,750. And just the, the difference um, from our margin costing statement uh, with the profit and loss is that we include opening and closing stock. Now there was no opening stock here, so we just have closing stock, so minus your closing stock. So the closing stock is what we produced of 15, minus what we sold was 12, so that works out at 3,000 in units. And to cost that then, it's 3,000. Multiplied by the variable cost per unit so the variable cost per unit works out at 185. Now that's made up of the 27,750 divided by the 15,000 units that we produced. So that closing stock value works out at 5,550. So if we take that out, that gives us back then our cost of production at 22,200. So minusing that from our sales will give us a contribution of 28,200. So that's our contribution. I'm just going to write that down there again to label it. And then we minus our fixed costs. And the fixed costs were given in the question itself as 8,400. They don't change with the number of units. So that works out then at 19,800. So that's our net profit using marginal costing. So now the second part of part B here is to do the absorption costing profit and loss. So just put in a heading. And again, we start off with the sales. So the sales figure will actually be the same. Um, we have that calculated already at 50,400. That's the 12,000 units at 420 per unit. And from that then, you minus your production costs. And this is where the big difference is with marginal costing. Marginal costing separates out the variable costs from the fixed costs, but with absorption, you simply put in all the costs. So materials, and again, this is 15,000 by 70 cents. We've that calculated already at 10,500. We have labor, 15,000 by the 60 cent. That worked out at 9,000, so there's no changes in those. The overheads, that worked out at 8,250. So it's very quick, it's the same figures. And here we put in the fixed overheads as well. So you just add them in, they're given there at 8,400. So that gives us back then our overall cost of production, 36,150. But again, we have to minus the closing inventory. And again, the, the closing inventory is the same quantity, it's 3,000. And this time it's multiplied by the production costs 
per unit. Uh, so 36,150 divided by 15. I'll just make a note of that there. Uh, so you can reference it 36,150 that we just got there. If that was divided by 15,000 units, you would get the unit uh, production cost of 241. So 3,000 in closing stock multiplied by 241 gives me closing stock of 7,230. So just run that up in your calculator. So take out your closing stock, just like you would in any trading account, and you get your 28,920, that's your cost of production. So again, we're going to subtract that from the sales, and that will give us our profit. And our profit works out at 21,480. Okay, so the value of our closing stock differs between marginal and absorption costing and that results then in a different profit figure. So the next part of the question then is to outline the differences and indicate which method should be used. So as we've just seen, by those calculations, um, the closing stock closing stock valuations differ. So again, if you want to state the figures for marginal costing closing stock. That came to 5,550, whereas with absorption, the closing stock here was 7,230, so a higher valuation in our inventory there. So that's one difference. So that's because the marginal costing, as we saw, It doesn't include fixed costs as part of production costs. So with marginal costs, so the marginal costs are Production costs overall came to 22,200, whereas with our absorption, um, the production costs came to 28,920. So that's a significant difference and that then results in different profit figures. So the profit is higher with the absorption. So the profit is higher, as I said, with absorption costing, it was 21,460 versus 19,800 um, profit there with marginal. And 22, I'll just, sorry, I'll just put up that figure, 21,480 was the profit under absorption. So those are just some of the key differences you can observe from that exercise. And one of the things then you're asked to finally do here is indicate which method should be used for financial accounting purposes and absorption costing.
should be used. So just state it clearly. Um, in order to meet your accounting standards, um, you have to use absorption costing. And the reason being is that this method matches the costs okay including the fixed costs with the sales so this method matches the costs including the fixed costs with the sales so the fixed costs are included with the value of the inventory and therefore when we have closing stock the fixed cost element of the closing stock is taken out and transfers with the stock to the next financial year.